What if I told you that there was a way to avoid nasty arguments with your wife or girlfriend and turn what could have been a three-day epic conflict into a moment of deep intimacy? Well, there is, and 99% of women will respond well to this if you do it properly. And the this is really simple. It's just four simple words, a simple phrase. But before I tell you those words, I want to explain how to do it. Because if you do this wrong at the wrong time or in the wrong way, it can backfire. And that three-day argument could turn into a week-long conflict. So this is a really, really useful tool, but you have to do it properly. In order to use these four words properly, you need to really understand what's happening when a couple fights and why those fights escalate the way that they usually do. So normally when a couple fights, it starts with one person feeling triggered by something the other person said or did. Often it's something really small, right? Like she always leaves the lights on when she leaves the house every single time, or he forgot to pick something up from the store on his way home. But sometimes it's about something bigger, like she feels like he never listens to her, or he feels like nothing he ever does is gonna be good enough for her. Whether the problem is big or small, most couples deal with it in the same way. They start by explaining to the other person how they hurt them and how they need to change their behavior. And if you have been to couples counseling or worked with a coach or just watched a lot of videos here on YouTube, you might actually do this very intentionally and very carefully. You might follow the ground rules for this kind of conflict resolution. If you do that, you might be doing things like blaming the behavior, not the person, right? You're acting crazy instead of you are crazy. Or you might use I statements. Right? When you don't listen to me, I feel rejected. I need you to pay attention when I'm talking. But even if you follow these ground rules, it probably backfires a lot of the time. And that's because you're still speaking in a way that really blames your partner. And that actually hurts both of you because it leaves you feeling like the victim, like you are disempowered and totally at the mercy of them. And if they don't choose to change their behavior, you're not gonna be able to be okay or be happy. And it makes them feel bad because they feel attacked, right? You're blaming them for how you feel. They're gonna feel defensive and most of the time they're probably either gonna lash out or withdraw. Right? So this is where the four magic words come in and they're really simple. The four words are, can you help me? You have to use them in a pretty specific way. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. But when you use them properly, these words allow you to both take accountability, take responsibility for what you're thinking and feeling while still inviting your partner to change the behavior that you wanna change. And like I said, if you can do this properly, if you can be calm, compassionate, and curious when you use these three words, 99% of women will respond positively to this and it will deepen the intimacy, deepen the connection, improve your relationship instead of leaving you in a fight where you don't talk to each other for days on end. All right, so here is what it looks like. When you leave the lights on, it seems to me that you don't care about how hard I work to pay the bills. When I'm thinking thoughts like that, I feel unloved. Since I know that you do care and I know that you do appreciate me, I recognize that this is a doubt inside myself that I need to work on. As I'm doing that, can you help me by trying to remember to turn the lights off? Here's another example. When you complain about all the things that need to be done around the house, I start to feel like nothing I ever do is gonna be good enough for you. When I'm thinking like that, I feel really rejected. I start to become afraid that you don't want me anymore. Now, I know rationally that you do love me and you do care about me, but these fears keep coming up. Can you help me manage them? Can you help me overcome them by asking in a gentler way? What I hope you're noticing here is that when you ask your partner for help, you're asking them to help you work on something that is your problem. Instead of looking at your partner and saying, I need you to change your behavior because it's making me feel bad, you're saying there's things inside of me that are making me feel bad. And when you do this, it really triggers it and it all comes up. But this requires a fair amount of self-awareness, right? You have to go under the surface here because this isn't about the lights being left on or the things that need to be done around the house. This is about how you feel in the relationship, if you feel valued, if you feel loved. This is probably about deep-seated fears of unworthiness self-doubt, rejection, that probably go all the way back to your childhood if you really wanted to dig around and look at that. In one of his incredible interviews here on YouTube, Dr. Gabor Mate gives a wonderful metaphor about being triggered in a relationship. He describes it this way, if the other person is the trigger, right, they are literally the trigger on the gun, but you're the gun. You're the one that's full of gunpowder and lead and that's like primed and loaded and ready to explode. And that's what's happening in all of these examples. 
right? Your partner does something or says something or doesn't do or say something, and it sets off the gunpowder inside of you. But that is yours. That is your fear. That is your self-doubt. That is your insecurity. They are triggering it. So what we're doing with these four words, can you help me? Basically what you're saying to your partner is, hey, I've got this loaded gun going on here and I'm really trying to disarm it. I'm trying to take out the gunpowder. Can you help me by not pulling the trigger while I work on that? Because here I am working with this loaded weapon and it's hard and it's gonna take some work and some figuring out to overcome these fears and doubts and really feel confident and secure in myself and in this relationship. That's mine, I'm gonna do that work. Will you help me by trying to not light a match under that gunpowder while I'm doing it? It takes a fair amount of honesty and self-awareness to do this. Uh, but fortunately, anyone can learn self-awareness and honesty simply by practicing. Now, you might also be noticing that I'm assuming that the other person actually does care about you and wants to help you and wants to support you. And if you're in a generally healthy relationship, that's probably true. I guess sometimes you feel triggered and that doubt comes up, but you know deep down that they do love you, that they do care and that they wanna support you. If that's where you are, then you can use this exercise just the way I've described it. Right? Let them know when you do this, this is what it triggers inside of me, which is mine. I'm working on that. And can you help me by not pulling the trigger so often while I'm resolving this inside myself? But what if you don't know? Sometimes you don't know. Right? What if they really don't care? What if they have one foot out the door or maybe already interested in somebody else or are thinking about a divorce? There may be times where you think their behavior might actually mean that they don't care, that they don't love you. You can still use these four words in that case and get a lot of clarity and avoid some nasty arguments. So let me give you some examples of what that looks like. Um, when I ask you to pick something up from the grocery store for me and you forget, I have the thought that you've forgotten about me, not just about the thing I asked you to pick up. And when I think like that, I feel sad and small and unloved and I feel like maybe you don't wanna be with me anymore. Can you help me understand what's really happening when you forget to pick something up at the store? Or as another example, when you don't respond to me, I think that you're ignoring me and then I think maybe that's because you don't find me interesting. And when I believe that thought, I start to feel unloved and rejected and I'm afraid maybe you don't wanna be with me anymore. Can you help me understand what's really happening when you don't answer me when I speak to you? When you use the words, can you help me in this way, you're doing two powerful things. First, you're sharing the assumptions that you're making. Your partner's doing something, you have all of these assumptions about what that means about them, about you, about the relationship. You're telling them what those assumptions are. Hey, this is what my brain is making it mean when you do this. And then secondly, you're inviting them to tell you what's really happening inside of them. Are your assumptions accurate? Or is there something else? Is there a different internal experience that they're having that you don't know anything about? So now instead of fighting with each other without having the full story, you actually have an opportunity to get the full story. And this can be hard because you might not like what they tell you, but you've created a space where honesty is possible. And if you can be honest with your partner, then you can both fully understand what's happening, where the disconnect is, and that's where you have the opportunity to find solutions. Can you help me? These four simple words spoken with genuine curiosity, compassion, and self-awareness can transform your relationships. And if you can present these words with that calm, curious demeanor, I promise you 99% of women will respond positively to those statements. But sometimes it might be really hard to get into that calm demeanor because you feel really freaking triggered, right? And in that moment, it might be really hard to speak like this in a calm way. So there are actually some other things you can do. There are a lot of ways to strengthen physical, mental, and emotional intimacy with your partner without using words at all. And if you do that groundwork, you'll find that these kinds of conversations become a lot easier. So in this next video, I share 10 simple ways to effectively increase the intimacy and connection in your relationship without sex and without talking. And by doing that, you can really set the stage so that when you need to have these conversations, when you are feeling triggered, there's more safety between you and your partner so that you're able to say the words, can you help me, and really mean them with a lot of curiosity and compassion. So come with me into this next video. Let's talk about ways to strengthen your relationship by building intimacy.